Welcome back to the arcade. All right, well, today we're not going to actually fix anything. It's going to be more of a show and tell. And this came about um, last Friday. I was watching some YouTube uh, videos. And uh, there's a, another arcade channel. If any, any of you are into YouTube, I'm sure you've heard of uh, Delusional Arcade. And uh, he has a YouTube channel, very professional channel, which is growing and, uh, you know, getting real popular. Anyway, uh, this last Friday he had a, a live stream on YouTube, and he calls it Dale's Roundtable. And what it is, is he gets together... Uh, live on YouTube with some of his arcade uh, friends and anybody can join in and of course you have the the live chat over on the sidebar so you can uh, join into the conversation ask questions and participate and uh, it's just a good time help you know had by all and uh, so check out his channel and um, subscribe to it and uh, that way you'll be notified when he has another one of these live roundtables. So anyway, they got to discussing, you know, what had been going on uh, in the prior week since the last time they got together. And one of the uh, uh, arcade collectors had gotten a bunch of manuals and was going through them. And he said that he found this real neat uh, Mark III promotional folder and uh, I said hey I got one of those so I typed it in told them that I had one so I figured I'd make this short little video and I would present it and uh, show what mine looks like and I'm sure they're probably all the same and uh, here it is right here and it's basically a folder it's got basically the same picture that the manual has on it and basically the same picture of the side art um, and it's uh, it's in fair condition it's, it's not the, the best example I'm sure I've had this for over 20 years so you know I've been collecting this type of stuff you know a, a lot of us that collect arcade machines also collect anything that goes along with the machines uh, the manuals, the, the arcade flyers, um, you know, any any type of collectibles that pertain to a particular game that you like or have interest in. So this is one item that I picked up. And uh, so anyway, it's got the nice colorful Mark III side art uh, with the airplane and all, and they got the Milestar logo. And it's the Mile Star Files. Mile Star flies into the Laserdisc game era. Now, this was probably produced when the game came out in 1983. And it's a promotional brochure. It was probably at the arcade uh, trade shows. They probably gave them out there. Or uh, the sales representatives probably gave these out to... Um, operators back in the day to try to sell the game all right well let's look inside now i got a couple of items in here that didn't come with the press kit but i just kept them in this folder in a file cabinet to, you know to protect the items so i'll open it up here and um i'll get some close-up video of it and sort of stitch it in as i go but uh, i'm just going to go through it like it is right now i'm not really set up to really video this in, in a very good way but I'm gonna try to do the best I can all right well this is the inside of the folder and it's got a pocket on each side where you can put paperwork and right here it has a mile star electronics incorporated business card and this business card is for Gilbert G Pollock vice president of sales and merchandising and it gives the address and telephone number and um, at this time, Milestar uh, was a Columbia Pictures Industries company. And 
Okay. First, let's look at some unique items or one unique item that I don't know if anybody's ever seen before. It may be rare, may not be rare. I don't know. Maybe you have one. If you have one, let me know if you've ever seen one. What is this? Okay. Actually, this is a video disc cleaning mitt. Okay. It's in fairly good condition. It's a little dirty, has some stains on it. I don't believe it's ever been used. It's got a little tab on it here where you could kind of hang it up on a nail, I guess. Um, and it's got the Milestar Electronics logo with the address. It says Video Disc Cleaning Mitt, uh, Technical Marketing Services, and a telephone number, and it has a picture of the Mark III cockpit on it. So what this was supposed to be used for you can put your hand in it and you can use it to clean off the, the laser disc. So I don't know if this came with the game. Uh, it very well could have came with the cockpit game since it has a picture of the cockpit on it. Uh, this is the only one I've ever seen. I don't know if anybody else has any, if any of them has survived. On the back, it's just nothing but it's just made in USA on it. And it's just a piece of like microfiber material or almost like felt that's been sewed together, folded over and sewed to make a little mitt. So I thought that was kind of a, a neat little item. So that's one little collectible I got. And of course this, I don't know if this came with the game originally or not, but this is a um, manual for the PR8210 laser disc player and this is the original laser disc player that came in the Mark III games. So uh, this is basically the manual that would come if you know you bought this. This was a commercial um, laser disc player. I don't know if it was sold to the public or if it I know they used them a lot in uh, industries like uh, car dealerships used to use the laser disc players to uh, promote the cars in the showroom and, and stuff like that. So, and for training purposes and a lot of other stuff. So, but it, it was probably set up for a consumer because it even tells you, you know, how to. Hook it, hook it into your television set if you have a TV antenna. So it was probably for the uh, home market too. And I don't know if this originally came in it or what, but this is the this is laminated, and this is the simplified installation instructions for the PR eighty two ten video disc player. So this tells you, I guess, what came with it. And it tells you about the little locking screw that if you ever uh, ship the player, you should put this little locking screw uh, to lock down the laser disc mechanism because this laser disc player isn't solid state. It has a laser tube in it, a heavy, great big laser tube. And uh, when you hand, if you have one of these players, you got to handle it. You don't want to lay it up on its side because the weight of the laser tube will cause the gear that moves the, the laser on the track is on a spring and it'll it'll jump over the teeth and it'll slide and it'll get it out of time. And you'll have to go inside the laser disc player to retime the laser slide. So, um, yeah, you got to be real careful with these laser disc players. But anyway, this is just a manual. has some troubleshooting guides in the back of it, whatever. has the remote control, which I'm sure didn't come with the game, but I actually have one of these remote controls somewhere around here. Um, but anyway, so that's just uh, another little item is to operating instructions for the laser disc player in the game. And this didn't come in the press kit either. Now I don't remember where I picked this up, but um, I'm sure I probably got it off of eBay. This right here and it's in a protective folder and I don't think I've ever taken it out of this protective folder. 
where you can put it in a three ring binder. Uh, this evidently is a publication, a technical newsletter that was distributed by MyStar Electronics. This one here is called On Target, and this one is Volume 5, Issue 1, January, February of 1984. And this one here is uh, Mach 3 Troubleshooting. So it gives you an introduction to the game, and uh, it just gives you uh, information on troubleshooting. With the frame number decoder, and on the back here, it continues, and uh, it actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it out of this cover. I don't think I've ever taken it out, to be honest with you. It does have some more stuff on the inside of it. So yeah, uh, maybe if uh, nobody has ever seen this before, I, I need to scan it and uh, send a copy to Jeff Kinder of the Dragon's Lair Project. So Jeff, if you want a copy of this, uh, I'll see if I can scan it and send it to you. But this is all troubleshooting, uh, the audio track decoder, uh, the command controller. Uh, pretty much just it's a little technical and Mark III is a technical game believe me if you ever tried to get one working it's not the simplest game there ever was so um, but it is doable so and uh, I think it's a very underrated game and I, I enjoy mine although I haven't had them up and running for a while and that's on my radar to do so in the future I'm going to do some videos on getting my Mark III's back up and running again. I do have two Mark III's. I have a, um, an upright, which I put together from parts. It had been uh, converted to an altered beast. And I bought the cabinet uh, from my local coin op distributor, which is just a couple miles up the road from me. And uh, I, I converted it back into a Mark III. And... Uh, so anyway, uh, it has a monitor problem. I put a brand new HAP monitor in it, and about 10 years ago, the flyback just uh, started arcing and had a big hole in it. So um, I ordered a new flyback for it, and uh, I still have it in a box. I haven't taken it out, so I need to get to that. So, yeah. So this is just a... Um, Another little thing that I got here, and uh, I thought it was kind of neat, so I thought I'd share that too. Okay, <clears throat> now to the main thing here. This is part of the original press release, and um, so let me just take them out here. And this right here uh, is a news release, and um, let's see. This is basically, okay, everybody knows who Steve Ritchie is, right? The king of flow, the uh, designer of some of the best pinball machines that's ever been created. Uh, so, you know, King Richie is the king when it comes to pinball. Um, and I have several of his games here. But anyway, this is about Steve Ritchie. But it's not the same Steve Ritchie. Now, I know I, I read this back when I got this 20 years ago. And back then, I didn't put two and two together. And I would kind of forgot about it. But uh, the guys discussing this on the roundtable uh, this past week that's the first thing they brought up that this was about Steve Ritchie okay and I'll, I'll just read a little bit of this um, it says in August 1983 Vietnam ace pilot Steve Ritchie was commissioned to test pilot the new F-15 Eagle the jet which led to the design of Milestar's Mark III laser arcade game Having tested the plane for low-level speed, maneuverability, radar, and avionics, 
Ritchie is the perfect candidate to evaluate the flight of the Mark III game. Ritchie made aviation history when he became the only American pilot to shoot down five Soviet MiG-21s while on his second tour of duty in Southeast Asia during the Vietnam conflict. He is the Air Force's first fighter ace since the Korean War. A veteran of, the, of 339 combat missions, Ritchie is one of the most highly decorated Americans in U.S. military history. His decorations include the Air Force Cross, four silver stars, 10 distinguished flying crosses, and 25 air medals. Ritchie's other awards include the 1972 Mackey Trophy for the most significant Air Force missions of the year, the 1972 Colonel James Jabbar Award for airmanship presented by the Air Force Academy and the 1973 VFW Armed Forces Award for outstanding contributions to the national security of the United States. Ritchie is the past president of the Combat Pilots Association of America, a lieutenant colonel in the Air National Guard, and a former national director of the Air Force Association. He is the winner of two Freedom Foundation Awards in the category of public address. Born in Reedsville, North Carolina, Ritchie received a Bachelor of Science degree from the Air Force Academy in 1964, during which time he was starting, he was starting halfback for the Air Force Falcons in 1962 and 1963, with his final game in the 1963 Gator Bowl. Uh, he en entered pilot training in August 1964 and graduated first in his class. Ritchie currently runs his own speaking, film, and television company in Las Vegas, Nevada. So I think we could say that this Steve Ritchie, uh, like our pinball Steve Ritchie, is a badass. Okay. And uh, this is the news release for the Laser Arcade game. My, Miles Star announces new Mark III Laser Arcade game. North Lake, Illinois, October 1983. Miles Star Electronics President Boyd W. Brown today announced its new Mark III Laser game, which is expected to uh, revive interest in game playing among arcade devotees. Mark III provides the ultimate and fast-paced play action via live action visuals, superimposed computer graphics, realistic sound effects, a wraparound Fresno lens that puts the player into the action, and vibration that helps create the illusion of actual flight. Milestar's introduction a video disc technology in the new Mark III game confirms our commitment to both short and long-term advancement in the coin-operated game industry, said Brown. Video disc technology is one of the most cost-effective storage media available today. Video and audio information is stored in the form of microscopic tracks arranged in a continuous spiral on a video disc, a plastic two-sided disc approximately 30 centimeters in diameter. The video disc has a capacity for 54,000 tracks per side. The video disc player processes the information using a laser beam which reads the recorded information as it moves along the disc tracks. Modeled after the F-15 fighter plane design, the Mark III Military Air Command Hunter, 
that's what Mark III stands for, uses actual color film footage over which the player flies, avoiding enemy action while firing at ground and airborne targets or bombing enemy installations. By making a selection on the control stick, players can choose to pilot either a bomber or fighter plane. Mark III is the first arcade game that puts the player into a total environment situation, said John Von Leeson, Vice President, Marketing and New Business Development for Milestar. The rumbling of the cockpit seat and tension felt in the controls further enhanced the feeling of flying faster than the speed of sound. In addition to video disc technology, Mark III is e equipped with a Frenzel lens which expands the size of the screen. The game features bomb release buttons and a trigger on the joystick which has 180 degree movement, enabling the player to bank the plane left or right and climb or descend. By his or her skill as a fighter pilot, the player can prolong the duration of the flight. Although video disc technology is new, the Milestar game will use proven components, including a video disc player from a leading manufacturer. All right. Mark III has been tested, marketed in several game locations throughout the country and it achieved the highest overall ratings of any game developed by MyStar in its 56-year history. We expect the game to create a surge in the coin-op industry since it increases total game revenues at a location and does not merely cannibalize revenues from the locations of the games, said Von Leeson. The MyStar team of designers, engineers, Graphic and sound specialists have spent more than 18 months to develop Mark III, which will be available in two styles, cockpit and upright. The game is also designed for conversion to new software in the future, assuring long-term profitability. Milestar Electronics Incorporated, headquartered in North Lake, Illinois, is a major designer, manufacturer, and marketeer of coin-operated electronic games. In 1976, Milestar, then the D. Galop Company, became a subsidiary of Columbia Pictures Industries Incorporated. Columbia was acquired by the Coca-Cola Company in 1982. Okay. And this, I think, I don't know if this was in the press kit or not. I can't remember. It may have been something I put in here, but it may have been in the press kit. I'm thinking it is. Uh, this is for the coin op entertainment industry, published twice monthly, play meter, October 15th, 1983, and uh, has Mark III on the cover. Miles Star flies into LaserDisc, Game Era, Pinball Revival, National First Video Lottery. So this evidently is the cover to the Play Meter magazine. Um, and it has the article, I guess, that was in the Play Meter magazine from October 15th, 1983. So, yeah, this was at the AMOA booth 1000. So that's probably where uh, this kit uh, press kit came from was at the uh, the show where they were showing off the uh, the new games so I would say yeah that probably came in the press kit also also came in the press kit was this color photo uh, this is the cockpit game and this is uh, the fighter pilot Steve Ritchie himself so uh, Nice color picture that can be framed. It says, Vietnam ace fighter pilot Steve Ritchie poses with Milestar Electronics' new Mark III laser arcade game. Ritchie, who downed five MiG-21s during the Vietnam conflict, 
has been contracted to represent Miles Starr at the October 1983 AMOA convention in New Orleans and will make additional appearances as the game is introduced in arcades. And it also has this other uh, picture, which has four pictures of the cockpit, uh, some gameplay for the fighter pilot and the, uh, the bomber. And this shows somebody in the cockpit playing the game. So, yeah. And that's it. That's the complete contents of the, uh, the press kit and some other items that I had. So, I hope you enjoyed that and uh, found it interesting. Uh, arcade history like this is, is always neat to run across it and uh, and preserve it. And uh, yeah, I just thought it was pretty neat. And of course this stuff here, this, this article was, was pretty neat. I'll go ahead and put this back in the, in the uh, folder, but I'm going to try to scan this and get a copy to, to Jeff if he wants a copy and uh, so that they can get it up on the uh, Dragon Slayer project in the archives. So, all right, well, that's just going to end this little short little video. I hope you enjoyed that little presentation and uh, can appreciate some uh, artifacts from, from video game history. So, uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, subscribe. You never know when I'm going to come up with some little off the wall and something that might be interesting, or we're going to get back to doing some arcade repairs. Uh, hopefully, maybe next summer or next spring, when I get back out in the garage, uh, we can get to work on my Mark III. My Mark III upright has a little bit of water damage on the cabinet I need to repair. And I need to fix the monitor. Other than that, it was working when I put it out there. Um, the cockpit was working when I put it out there, but it's been basically in storage. And the last time I plugged it in, the laser disc player wouldn't come up. It is completely original with matching numbers on not only the game boards, matching numbers on the monitor, matching numbers uh, on the laser disc player. It is completely 100% untouched and original. It even has the um, the cardboard foil uh, RF shield around the board set. So I'll try to uh, at, at the end of this. I think I have a few pictures. So I'll I'll put a little slideshow uh, and show a few pictures of of my games. So if you're interested, stick around for that. Okay. That's going to end it right here, except for maybe the little slideshow. So I uh, hope you enjoyed it. And uh, be sure to subscribe, and hopefully we'll have more to come. Thanks for watching.